Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of the Global Perspectives show in partnership with Dukascopy TV. I'm Flavio Roman and for today's edition we have a special guest, uh, Mr. Anton Golub from Olsen Limited, with whom we will speak about high frequency trading. Hello Anton and welcome to the show, thank you for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure to be here Flavio. So today we're going to speak about high frequency trading, which is what you do. And uh, I know many people from finance know about high frequency trading, but probably for outside people, it's not so well known. So we would like to ask you, what is high frequency trading? And also, how does it differ from other maybe traditional strategies of trading? Okay, so high frequency trading can be most easily characterized as extremely fast, fully automated and computerized trading where there is little to no interaction of uh, human interaction with the trading algorithms. So unlike traditional investment strategies that heavily rely on human judgment to make trading decisions, high frequency traders rely on computer algorithms, algorithms to make trading decisions. Okay, so there are many reasons why that happens. First of all is that high frequency trading algorithms require real time data analysis, but also real time trading decisions. Okay. Secondly, the, the time horizon of, the of high frequency trading strategy is usually extremely short, from several milliseconds to maybe a couple of hours. And this, uh, the pricing inefficiencies that the high frequency trading uh, traders exploit are usually out of the reach of uh, human traders. And finally, high frequency trading algorithms are usually employed across a wide variety of financial securities. For instance, at the, same at the same time you can trade equities, foreign exchange, bonds, derivatives and so on. So it's the, the critical component in, all, in the success of high frequency trading is actually use of computers. I understand. So what you're saying is that uh, it seems that speed is a very important component in everything that you mentioned. Yes. Now, um, how does a high frequency trading uh, algorithm or strategy use this to achieve a certain advantage compared to other strategies. Okay, so the critical component for the success of high frequency trading algorithms is the reduction of latency and latency in context of high frequency trading refers to the reduction of time delay between receiving market information and reacting to it. As high frequency trading, strat uh, stra trading strategies have a very short time horizon that usually ranges in milliseconds, it's extremely important to have this speed. So how do the traders do that? Well, they do it in two ways. It's by uh, coll collocating their servers right next to the trading venue. So in that sense, we just redu reduce the geographical distance between the high frequency traders' computers and the, and the trading venue. And the second way of um, reducing latency is actually purchasing unprocessed data from the trading venue, the so-called direct data fee feeds. Basically, they provide unfiltered data to the trader and then the trader processes th this data on its own extremely fast. It seems to me that what you're saying is that there is a heavy reliance on IT systems. Yeah. Now, we know that technology has been developing quite fast and quite a lot over the past years and maybe decades. But what about the history of high frequency trading itself? When was it born? Uh, because of this reliance on the technology, how did it go hand in hand with that? Yes. This is actually an excellent question. And while uh, telecommunication advances and investments in computing were a major contribution to the rise of high frequency trading. As I mentioned, it's extremely important. But the main reason for the rise of high frequency trading was the fragmentation of trading venues and the emergence of the trading venues in the beginning and the mid of 2000s. So what happened is we had this advances of computing and then some trading venues started providing fast and computerized a access to a, tr to a trading venue. The fastest traders realized very quickly is that when we have many marketplaces, then naturally inefficiencies arise in pricing of financial securities. So the way that uh, the, the way this pricing inefficiencies can be corrected is by the fastest traders to recognizing them and correcting them. And this is the way that, uh, that the high frequency trading started flourishing. But there was then an outcry over this fragmentation in the trading among the trading venues. So regulators implemented a series of regulatory practices to unify this fragmented market and to establish uh, protection against inferior execution. 
But there was actually an unintended consequences in all of this because now the markets are even more fragmented th than ever. For instance, in US equity markets, we have more than 10 exchanges, over 50 dark pools, and more than 200 uh, internalization broker dealer platforms. So it seems even though the intentions were, were good, there were many more unintended consequences that just contributed to the rise of high frequency trading. I see. It uh, certainly looks like a very broad topic and uh, very interesting to dissect. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we'll be definitely inviting you for a new episode so that we can discuss some more insight about this high frequency trading. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Global Perspectives show in partnership with Dukascopy TV. I'm Flavio Roman. Until our next encounter, we wish you all the best. Goodbye.